right, so I'm doing the transmission um, fluid and pan service. This is a 2012 BMW X5. It's a, a diesel uh, M M57, and uh, got the pan off. Everything's drained, um, but I couldn't really find too much about the diesels, uh, about getting those rear bolts. Because what I discovered was these four bolts at the rear are actually blocked by this um, transmission cross member and you don't have enough room to get a uh, socket in there those are t40 um, and i actually do have a block on the jack lifting up on the transfer case that gave me about another inch to work with but it still wasn't enough room to get the uh, torx socket in there um, if i go any further with the jack it starts to raise the cross member and the chassis and everything so uh, jacking up more won't actually give me any more space because the cross member will start moving moving up with the transfer case too so for those rear bolts what i did was had a t40 bits and pretty much stuck it up in between the cross member got it in there and then used this quarter inch a uh, little tiny wrench and broke the bolts loose um, they were a little bit tight I kind of lost some uh, skin on my knuckles from their ribs on the oil pan but I was able to break them loose um, and then loosen them up enough to get them by hand uh, so for those rear ones I'm going to be replacing them with actual hex bolts that I got from Lowe's um, these are grade uh, 10.9 as opposed to the 8.8 .8 from factory so these should be a little bit better bolts they are um, let me see yeah 6 by 1.0 by 30 millimeter and then I have these um, these washers for them too and these are actually uh, pretty much the same this bolt and washer combo is actually the same dimensions as the uh, the factory factory bolt so it's gonna work out but I figured out that I'm still not gonna have enough space to get a, a socket on this um, and a proper torque wrench um, that's something you can only really do when you take that cross member off uh, so I'm just gonna have to feel it by hand get it close enough to torque to where it feels right because um, the downside is there's one bolt, uh, if I can see it right there, that is directly above, just above the SCR unit, just in front, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to, so kind of taking the cross member off is kind of a last resort type deal, so I'm trying it this way, hopefully it doesn't have to come to that. But as of right now, it's been successful so far. But yeah, this is a 2012 uh, diesel. And the only stuff I could find was for gas engines. And gas engines, everybody just drops the pan and there's no interference. But with the diesels, you have this issue with the bolts in the rear. So if anybody's doing a uh, trans pan on a E70 uh, diesel, just uh, heads up, you're going to have those four bolts at the back that you're going to have to deal with. Alright, and here we are, day two of uh, the pan service for the X5. So, I drained everything I got out of the uh, pan originally into this big bucket and then also let the pan drain overnight. Um, put it into the Pitocin jug where I got the new fluid um, and only got about four almost four and a half out that's with the pan draining and having it drain into that big container so four and a half out total um, when I bought this kit I was given um, seven quarts of the new fluid and I didn't use so one and about a half so I didn't use a quart and a half so 
out of seven, didn't use a quart and a half, I was able to put about five and a half in. Only drained four and a half. So, don't know her, unless I was a, uh, a full quart low, which I don't think I was, but who knows. Uh, there's also a little bit of this over here. This is mostly new fluid. This is stuff that I was, uh, was dripping out as I was pumping everything in. So if you saw my previous video, you know, I did lose a little bit when I did the, um, the thermostat for the transmission, but definitely did not lose a quart of oil. So other people say you can get six and a half quarts back in. Uh, wasn't the case for me. I don't know. Many people say, you know, you check the fluid at between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. Um, some people say you check it at 30, then you check it at 40. For me, I just had it right at, you know, 35 degrees. Um, let it sit overnight after I took it for a drive. And then this morning, got it back up to temperature you know, 35 degrees and I was able to get another, another quart in it. Uh, and as far as those bolts, I ended up not using them because I was still not even able to get a, uh, a socket in there. So I used the factory bolts and, uh, did this. <laughs> uh, I torqued the ones that I could get to down to the 10 foot pounds. Um, I think it's 10 foot pounds or like 88 it came out to be like 88 inch pounds so I set it at 90 inch pounds and torqued them that way and then felt what it felt like at that torque level and then try to replicate it on those on the back bolts um, everything is fine no leaks driven it you know around the block up the street a few times um, everything seems to be fine, but I was still not able to use these, which, which kind of sucks, but it, uh, prevented me from having to drop the transmission cross member. Uh, yeah, if y'all do this and you're able to get more in, or you know the exact procedure for refilling the, uh, transmission fluid at what temperature and everything, let me know. The car was level i jacked up on the back diff um because my driveway is slanted down a little bit i jacked up on the back differential and use a uh, leveling gauge made sure it was all level when i added the fluid and uh my final top off was around 35 to 37 degrees celsius um still was only able to get five and a half quarts in it uh, most people say six and a half but that wasn't the case for me. All right. Maybe I'll see another video coming soon of this little thing.